we came up with this trick where you take the images and then you rotate the camera 90 degrees, you take more images, and if you do that all just right, you can do this thing where all that glare cancels out and what we're left with is just the rings. We can think of it as a stack of images. Think of it as like a cube looking down. So let's, uh, let's turn it on its side. So now if we start peeling off the layers and looking downward through the stack, things suddenly become much, much cleaner. But the thing that immediately caught my eye was this little dot right there. It's not a perfectly sharp hot pixel like over here. And that's what made it pretty convincing to me that we had seen a very small moon of Pluto that nobody had seen before. To be sure you've detected a real moon or planet, you have to show it's moving, unlike the background stars. The thing that makes moons distinctive is if we come back later, they'd all have shifted because they all orbit the central planet. This required a great deal of patience to then wait about six days until we got our next set of observations of the Pluto system. Sure enough, the object was still there. It had moved by just about the right amount to be something orbiting Pluto, and we knew we had a moon. In Kansas in the 1920s, Clyde Tombaugh grew up in hard times and built telescopes using leftover farm implements. To check the accuracy of his best telescope, he sent drawings of Mars and Jupiter to the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. They were looking for staff, and he was hired. Along with observing the stars, he stoked the furnace and shoveled snow. But one assignment made history. Day after day, he'd use this machine, known as a blink comparator, to look for anything in his images that moved. It was tedious, painstaking work. But on plates taken on January 23rd and 29th and analyzed in February, he saw a small dot that did move against the fixed stars. Announcing the results after careful confirmation, the observatory made it easy to find the new planet by adding arrows. This is an incredible work of observational astronomy, and having done something similar but with much more powerful tools, I can really appreciate his achievement.